this week's video. I visit a troll, an update on the channel, and a little bit on creativity. You're watching the Caffeinated Bible. Let's jump in. Last week, I finished a series on Genesis with an overview of women's lives within Genesis. And that really seems to have generated a lot of interest. And a number of people have emailed me or texted me about doing the video on the different lives with the four trajectories of how Eve's story has been interpreted through history. That video is in the works. I had hoped to have it done for this week, but it's taking a lot of work, so I'll post that next week. In the meantime, we went up to the mountains for a week with our son and his family. And it is so wonderful to spend time with the grandkids and seeing them getting stronger and bigger and becoming better bicyclists as well. We're up in Keystone with the little family and we're doing a ride up the Soda Park Loop today. This is something we try to do every year and it's great to watch the grandkids get stronger and become better bikers. The views from this trail are amazing. Then on the fifth day up there, my heart went out again. It's like going from 50 miles an hour down to five. Soda Creek Trail number 914. This time, luckily, the meds they gave me were able to get me out of AFib. However, I was in a very irregular beat for about two days. You know what it's like when your heart skips a beat and you kind of go, oh, that was weird. Well. That's what it's like, but imagine that for two days straight, and it gives you some idea of what it feels like. So with mountain biking put on the kibosh, what could we do? Well, I can still hike or plod. And so the grandkids and I decided to go consult the great troll of Breckenridge. From downtown Breckenridge, the troll is only about a 15 minute walk away. And his name is Isaac Hartstone. And a little bit here, I'm gonna explain why we went to visit him. Isaac is a 15 foot tall troll that was born in August, 2019 as part of the International Festival of Arts in Breckenridge. His full name is Isaac Hartstone, and his family name was given to him when three young girls came up to the artist Thomas Dambo and gave him a heart-shaped rock to put in Isaac. Isaac is made out of recycled wood, and his soulful eyes and sort of gentle disposition has attracted a lot of people. Originally, his home was on one side of Breckenridge, and within two months, Isaac went viral online and the neighbors there began to complain. They wanted Isaac taken down because of all the traffic in their neighborhood. As one neighbor put it, imagine 10,000 people a day coming up to your house and asking for directions. A local town hall meeting was called and there were a lot of people there that wanted Isaac killed. They wanted him gone. On the other side, there were people that wanted to keep Isaac and give him a place within their city. The local town hall decided we're going to keep Isaac until the spring. However, within a month, the locals raised their pitchforks again and demanded that Isaac be chased from town. This time, even against Isaac's creator, Thomas Dambo, the council decided that Isaac must go. As news of Isaac's demise spread upon the internet, the city council of Breckenridge was inundated with criticisms about their heartless decision. Within a few weeks, the city council did some fast thinking on their feet and contacted Isaac's creator, Thomas Dambo, about a possible solution. 
rather than Isaac becoming fuel to heat someone's fireplace that winter, they asked if it would be possible to move him to another location within the city. In March of 2019, Breckenridge announced that Isaac would be surgically reassembled and brought back to life. After a great deal of loving care and work by his creator, Isaac was just about ready for life. The final touch was having the three girls place the heartstone within Isaac once again. And it shows some really creative thinking on the town's part. They were caught in a bind. First off, Isaac is really a phenomenal creation. The second thing is, he wasn't in the right location. It caused too much traffic for that neighborhood and for the neighbors there. And the third thing is, they realized that Isaac was a very welcome addition to their city. So how can we best bring all these factors together to create a new home for Isaac? What did I learn from visiting Isaac on our vacation? Well, a couple things, actually a couple old things. The first is that some people are just disproportionately creative. It's not fair for the rest of us, but we need to recognize and support their gifting within the larger community and within the church. Breckenridge, I think, is a lot better place because they found a home for their troll. Secondly, creativity adds to our world in very unexpected and interesting ways. Third, creativity has the power to bring people together. Look at all the people who go to visit Isaac. Or if you go to Chicago, go visit the Chicago Bean downtown. The number of people that come just to look at that reflective sculpture is really quite phenomenal. Fourth, creativity is often met with resistance. In this case, the people who lived near Isaac. But I think they had a good reason this time. In his book on leadership, Canoeing the Mountains, Todd Bolsinger writes that creativity often meets resistance from those that we least expect it from. And the final thing is, is that creativity is something that's often in short supply, but is desperately needed. Yet the constant truth of life is, is that things change. And as a result, we need creative thinkers that are going to help us to adapt to those changes. How are we going to address the questions that were raised about racial injustices after last year's demonstrations? What is a proper response? How are we going to change? What are we going to do? Or take COVID. This virus prompted radical disruptions around the world, and it's not over yet. But the question is, what is life, work, worship going to look like after this virus is over? Or climate change. How are we going to change the way we live, commute, get around, supply our energy, our economy, so that we can adapt to and face the threats from a changing climate? These are sort of like three mega issues, but there's a lot of little issues that confront us within our houses, within our churches, within our cities, and we need creative thinking to solve these. Creativity is essential for us as a culture, as a people, and as a church. And like Isaac, maybe it's not just an amazing act of creativity, but also one of adaptation, changing where he's going to live from in a housing area to a park. It's time to put on our creative thinking caps or maybe our creative thinking masks because the world needs more Isaacs. Until next week, when I dive into the four lives of Eve, peace. Oh, and before I forget, I'll put directions down below so that you can find Isaac if you want to go visit the troll yourself. Mm -hmm.